Hi folks, uh, well, this is my last video with the M&P 9 from Smith & Wesson. Uh, not anything bad has happened, necessarily. I've just decided, after shooting the VP9, um, I don't own one yet, but it, I did a rental at my local range, and compared it to this, and it was, uh, I'm not going to say night and day difference, but it was enough of a difference where it makes a lot more sense for me to shoot that, um, and to carry that. This pistol has been very reliable in the time that I've had it. Um, ergonomics are excellent, but there are little things here and there. Um, it is unloaded. Look at the chamber indicator, but yep, unloaded. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say about this gun. I think Smith & Wesson has done a good job um, as far as the improvements that they've made to the Smith and, uh, to the M&P series uh, the, compared to my original one. Um, it's, the trigger alone is uh, much improved. I've even, even people who have newer uh, M&P, like, say, 45s, uh, they... Their trigger still sucks in comparison to this M&P 9. Um, the SKU number, just so you know, is 309301. Uh, this is a fall, this is a, uh, fall two, 2013 production gun. Uh, when they implemented all those changes, the new barrel twist, uh, 1 in 10 instead of like 1 in, eight, one in 18 and a half, which is a ridiculously slow twist, um, they improved uh, the trigger reset, so the trigger would break and stand by, and now you have an audible and tactile reset. Now, it's still not as tactile as, say, a Glock, and certainly not as much as the VP9. But it's a great improvement. Uh, love the interchangeability of the back straps. What I found, just for me personally, uh, my original M&P9 was the thumb safety version. So the trigger we had sucked on it. It was a 2011 gun. Uh, but what I found when I owned it, and if you go back to my earlier videos, you can probably see it, I tend to carry the gun or shoot the gun much like a 1911 with a thumbs high hold because my thumb rests on that thumb safety. What I found shooting non-thumb safety versions of the M&P 940 shield compact uh, is that my thumb uh, just kind of is not helping with recoil. My hand actually sits a little bit lower than it needs to. What that causes for me in comparison to the thumb safety version is that I shoot low. Now, that's a training issue. I realize that. However, I don't have the money nor the time anymore to shoot as much as I should. That's just a fact of life. Not everybody has the money that they used to. Not in this economy, because it sucks balls. So instead, um, I need to find the platform that fits me the best. And that can mean a lot of different things. Uh, the ergonomics of the m p are excellent. But the trigger, just with the combined with my hand not sitting up as high as it needs to, despite trying all three variants of the back strap, uh, when I pull the trigger, it causes the, the gun to dip ever so slightly. Now, dry firing, it's virtually imperceptible. Live fire is when it becomes noticeable just because I can see the results downrange. That is bothersome. Um, one way to do it would obviously be to install the thumb safety, and I was very close to doing that, actually. And, uh, of course, changing these sights out, because uh, that could also help. And if I had intended to keep this gun, I intended on doing both, actually. I know it's kind of a backward step for some people to add a thumb safety, but the measure of control it added, for me, would have made it worth it. And because I would swipe the thumb safety off on the unholster, much like a 1911, that kind of alleviates that problem. And since 
despite my best attempts, I still have a lot of the muscle memory for a 1911. It's just not going away. It's the handgun I started on. So some bad habits are just ingrained, and it takes years to get, get rid of some of those training scars. Um, the sights are serviceable, but honestly, for a concealed carry gun, and you need to see have a very visible front sight, as you can tell, this sight picture is not particularly great. I don't like a square notch. I actually like the U or V notch, and I like having a very visible front sight and a rear sight that's uh, to an extent, lower, lower observable, lower observability, uh, if that make, makes any sense. So maybe not necessarily blacked out like a 10-8 uh, rear sight, but uh, just a very vibrant front sight. Uh, for me, the Trijicon HDs actually make quite a bit of sense. Um, a very bright red, red-orange, or a yellow front sight is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, Combined, the thumb safety would only be about $25 as far as an upgrade. Uh, the sights would be anywhere from $130 to $150. Um, and when looking at that, just to correct those issues, versus what I would be gaining with the VP9. Um, granted, I can't just make that assumption, you know, that I'm going to love the VP9 based on oh, just a, a few range trips. But at the same time, this has been an ongoing issue with for me with this gun. Um, I'd like the 17 round capacity and there are other little things here and there that I could probably work on. Um, maybe stippling the back straps might help. Um, honestly carrying this gun, this beaver tail, is um, a little bit more than I need and it just digs into my side. Um, I carry in, I think I did a video on this, a Comtac MTAC which uh, I could just switch holsters, I know. But uh, there's no way in hell I'm going to use a old Kydex holster in Texas in the summer. That just be that would be unpleasant. Uh, or actually any other time of year. It's just it's abrasive. It chases my skin. I'm not going to get into that. The leather or horsehide holsters they work the best for me. Back backing. But this video is going kind of long. I just wanted to go over. A few things of why this gun is going bye-bye, and uh, after I get back from my, um, I'm going to call it government vacation, actually it's not a vacation, it's, I'm working, but um, once I get back from that, in probably about a month or two, you'll see me, hopefully, with a HK VP9, um, where you have two magazines for it actually started purchasing magazines a couple months ago before I even realized that the VP9 was going to be released this year so I was thinking of getting a P30 LEM but uh, the more experience I now have on the LEM I'm not uh, the training issues would be even more amplified than, <laughs> than they are with this so uh, long video I know thanks for thanks for watching don't think I have any cool surprises inside of this case Oh, this is making me look like a jackass, I know. Oh, magazines. Yeah. So, that's it. It's the last you'll see. And, uh, oh, before I forget, joint, ham joint handgun competition, or whatever they're calling it this time around. What should they adopt? Well, I'll do that in another video. Alright, thanks guys. Have a great day.